If you've been watching the news, have been on any social media apps as of late, or really just like to stay up to date with what's going on in the US or the world, then you likely heard about the Texas deep freeze. If for whatever reason you didn't hear about it, that's all right because I can get you up to speed. Over the course of a few days last week, the entire state of Texas was hit with a storm they haven't had to experience in decades, a snowstorm. Now being from Canada, snow is just another day, but in the southern state of Texas, it led to an unprecedented storm, which unfortunately cut a lot of people off from the most basic necessities. We're talking up to 4 million people without electricity at one point and 13 million needing to boil their tap water just to safely drink it. With a population of about 29 million, that's almost half. Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking why did the Texas deep freeze happen? Make sure to smash that like button and let's get right into this one. Now Texas is known to be hot. It's also incredibly cheap. And unfortunately those two things, along with some bad decision making, led to one of the worst winter storms Texas will ever likely see. For starters, let's talk about how or why it started to snow in Texas in the first place, then we'll play the blame game. With the average temperature statewide sitting around 65 or 70 degrees Fahrenheit, Texas isn't known for getting snow all that often, or at all really. It has snowed in the past and the temperatures have dropped, however when this does happen, it's usually over the course of a day or two. When it snows, it looks like someone poured sugar on the road. It's not the kind of snow we're used to in the northern country of Canada. So to no surprise, when they had a huge storm, it really caught people off guard, and a lot of local officials weren't sure how to handle it. This includes government officials and those supplying the power and energy statewide. However, it seems some people may have seen this coming, they just weren't sure when. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to what's called the Polar Vortex. A large area always near both the North and South Pole, where low pressure and cold air go in a counterclockwise flow. This gives it that vortex name, which helps keep the cold air near the poles. So now you know why it's called a polar vortex, but why does it matter? Well, usually in the winter, as it gets colder in the North, the polar vortex expands, which can send cold air into the jet stream, which then brings those frigid temperatures to us. Polar vortexes have been around since the 50s, at least that we know of. But this latest one is confusing a lot of meteorologists, with some calling it the nastiest one they've seen in almost 70 years. It's believed this is due to a mix of human-caused climate change as well as natural weather patterns. Atmospheric waves, which are pretty much anything that disturbs the atmosphere in general, such as fluctuating temperatures, strong wind velocity, and so on, is what can cause the vortex to break out the cold air, leading to these random winter storms. This time around, Texas was one of the many unlucky areas affected. Greece and Turkey got unusual amounts of snowfall as well, yet it seems Texas was hit the hardest. Why? Well, aside from the natural aspect of things, it seems Texas has never been well equipped for a winter storm, and it's a risk they've been willing to take. Now, the obvious reasons as to why people didn't have power or clean water, pipes were freezing, which slowed any flow of gas and oil. With everyone turning up the thermostats and trying to keep warm, and such little resources due to the frozen pipes, eventually the systems got overworked and shut down. Normally, when certain areas of Texas are hit with the cold, they'll focus the production of energy elsewhere. This time around, the entire state was dealing with the cold, meaning they didn't have any options to move where they produce the energy. Of course, on top of this, the icy and snowy road conditions made it impossible for the equipment to be properly serviced, adding insult to injury. Now, the same equipment does work in colder states where they have snow and snowstorms, so it's not that it can't work in the cold, but given that Texas isn't used to the cold and more so the extreme heat, their entire state's infrastructure is focused on the warmer weather, not cold. Winterized equipment that could have handled the cold fronts would have served the entire state, but that would mean a significant increase in everyone's electrical bill. Majority of Texas residents have their power controlled by the Electrical Reliability Council of Texas, which is known as the ERCOT. It's an unregulated standalone power grid, which of course helps keep the cost of energy incredibly low, but also makes people susceptible to situations like this. This means they can't rely on other states' power and don't have a reserve or emergency plan, if you will. Rebecca Babin, senior equity trader at CIBC Private Wealth, explained, I quote, they have the infrastructure in place that meets the needs 99.9% .9 of the time. On these tail events, they're really ill-equipped. They're not incentivized to invest in the infrastructure to make those improvements. All in all, it pretty much just seems this deep freeze happened due to unprecedented weather conditions, which are still confusing meteorologists, as well as a lack of leadership in the state or willingness to pay for that extra 0.1% of security during random storms like this one. Back in 2011, a similar storm left 3.2 million without power, and it seems the lack of action a decade ago in Texas has once again led to history repeating itself. We'll see if state officials use this situation as a much needed wake-up call, and hopefully Ted Cruz won't go to Cancun again. If you guys don't know about the situation, you can look it up. Long story short, he lost power, so he went to Cancun. Well, tried to. Now, as always, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one down below. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video. What if Nir Lothotep existed in 2021? Blood Onyx Akami said, at this point, we would probably welcome his presence. Honestly, like, yeah, it's pretty bad. So let someone just make it worse. Who cares? Like, can't get much worse than where you are, you know? Flip Baker said, I find it funny that people still use images of a raid boss from World of Warcraft. 
okay, I'll be honest. I didn't raid much in WoW. I'm playing Classic again, so if any of you guys play WoW, let me know down below. I play on the server Ashkandi. It's like a normal server. I don't like PvP that much. But if you guys play, let me know. Let's let's you know let's level some alts together. I, I'm still playing Classic. PC's coming out. I'm excited. Uh, but what raid boss is that? Is it Nax? I don't know. I never raided, so I, w I really I wouldn't know. But if you guys know, let me know. Darren K said, actually, the person explaining all of this to us is Naralothotep in human form. Don't be fooled, guys. There is only one true god. All hail Cthulhu. So you're saying I'm Naralothotep. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. I wouldn't tell you guys if I was. So just keep watching and maybe I'll eventually drive y'all crazy. Ooh. All right, guys. That's all for this one. I've been your host, Jared Brown. So you know, we'll see you guys soon.